Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, it's Jesse's Path. So, the last time we left off, we had entered the McLeod sisters' home, and we are now face to face with all three sisters. Oh dear. I wonder what trouble we'll get up to today. Enjoy the video, guys. <clears throat> Let me get in character here. <clears throat> Grace, be nice. Once you get the fire going. Grace complies, and Marion takes my hand again, leading me to a chair by the fireplace. I take a seat, but instead of feeling the fire's warmth, I become cold all over and start to shiver. I'm so, so, so sorry. I don't know what's c c come over me. Hush, you poor thing. Let's get you warm. Marion strokes my hand, and which now aches and burns from the heat. I can't tell. The three sisters have gathered around me, a range of concern to pity playing across their faces. Grievance, Malcolm. Are you contagious? Maybe you shouldn't have come here. As if you could stay away from a house full of sultry young women. Speak for yourself. I'm struck by how unusual the sisters are acting. Had I walked in at the wrong time? Girls, a blanket, please. Some tea for Malcolm. The feather feels warm and itchy against my palms, and I realize that it's not the flame near my hands, but slight involuntary movements of my fingers. I run my hands together as they twitch. Marion stares at me with concern, her brow furrowed, lips frowning. We're glad you've come home safely, Malcolm, but a lot has changed since you left. Looks like you've changed, too. What does she mean by that? Am I understanding her words correctly? I try to respond, but my thoughts go cloudy. The room spins. I reach out for Marion, but my fingers, my fingers close tightly together. What on earth? I can't fathom what is happening to me. I fear the worst. My mind flashes back to the crippling nerve agents of the war. My knuckles and veins sting as if swarmed by hornets. My hands! I can't move them. Well, come now. You're going to be fine, Malcolm. Jessie's tone is stern. She has come back with a glass of something that is definitely not tea. Here, something special I liberated from the pub. It'll help you through it. She holds it to my mouth and I drink. The bitter liquid sears down my throat, lighting a fire deep in my chest. Meanwhile, Marion continues to stroke my bound fingers like a worried parent. Uh-oh. I guess it's time for some magic. Am I to be the new Sorcerer Supreme? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, I'm a furry! <laughs> oh, god, I've got hooves. Okay. Before my eyes, my fingers fuse together. I panic as they shrink and harden into dark, cloven hooves. A thin layer of brown fur develops around my wrists. What is this? What is going on? Barry is right. You've changed, Malcolm. Now, no more questions. Grace places a finger to my lips, then wraps a wool blanket around my shoulders. The wool feels itchy against my face, and I quickly realize that it's not the blanket on my cheeks, but slight twitches of my lips and jaw. I toss off the blanket and try to run my hand across my face, but the hoof awkwardly clips my lower jaw. My jaw juts out, cracking and lengthening, the tug as smooth as taffy being pulled. When it stops, it jolts my body, shaking me down through my neck and throat. Instinctively, I run my tongue along the inside of my cheek and can feel blunt and narrow crescent ridges of enamel. Even my teeth are readjusting. The fire in my chest grows. My body at once shakes and expands, and my insides feel full of adrenaline. My pulse races. I cry for help, but only a strangled bleat comes out. Shh. Stay calm, Malcolm. Breathe deeply. Marion tries to pacify me, putting her hand upon my muzzle, stroking my head. I feel like a drum is beating slowly inside, then more steadily and painfully. My ears become more direct and start increasing in size. The hair on my head falls out in clumps, replaced by more fur. Small bones pierce through my scalp as antlers form atop my skull. It's good art. Really good art.
The soft and bristly nubs continue to grow and extend as her hand moves along the fur. The antlers forcefully tear out and shed their furry covering as I bleat in terror. Oh, damn, those are some big antlers. The hard rack must stand two full feet above my body height. Ow. I push Marion away and jump back, realizing too late the true significance of her attentions. She looks hurt. We never should have gotten so close, Malcolm. You only have yourself to blame. Jessie has stepped up from behind me. She places a hand on my chest, causing the fire inside to erupt into a blaze. Immediately, my shirt tightens around my ribcage, and the buttons pop, exposing a fuller, broader chest with a lush coat of fur. My balance becomes unsteady. All the skin below my stomach pulsates as my legs grow longer and more muscular, the calves and thighs widening enough to rip through my trousers. Damn, boy, he thick! <laughs> I fumble with my hooves in to remove my belt, gagging as my torso builds out. Jessie watches my struggle, biting her lip. Hmm, let me take care of that for you. Oh no. Wow, he's huge. Jesus. That is a big dude! Helpless, I let Jesse work the clasp. My body continues to expand, ripping my shirt sleeves and completely, completely open. All the while, more brown fur spreads along every inch of my body. At last, the belt comes free and my pants fall to the floor. I gasp deeply, able to breathe once more, but the relief is short-lived. Oh, hey, I'm gonna be blurring that. <laughs> oh, my. Even my underclothes have shredded. I realize I am completely exposed. Marion is blushing, Jessie is ogling, and Grace is rolling her eyes at both of them. I wobble on my feet, feeling humiliated, vulnerable, and defiant. Don't worry, Malcolm. You're at the tail end of this. She steps up, looking like she might offer a hand to help my balance. Instead, she gives me a hearty slap on the rump. Tail! Oh no. <laughs> the little cotton tail. I'm bigger than a cotton tail now. Oh, yep, yeah, definitely. Uh, from the point of impact, the white tail bursts forth. The surprise makes me jump and hobble across the room. Malcolm, be careful. Don't get too close to the fire. Oh, hell. It takes an effort for her words to register. I stumble away from the fireplace, tongue lolling in a panic amplified by an unfamiliar animal urge to run for the hills. Am I losing my mind? A painful impact to my foot causes me to trip, sending me crashing to my knees. To my horror, even my feet are shifting. With two audible ruptures, hooves blow out through my leather shoes. My shoulders collapse inward, and I fall forward onto all fours. I try to stand, flailing, and my hind legs buck near the kitchen table. Serves you right. Now maybe you'll find a little asses to fawn over. Jessie groans, but Grace's taunt still cuts me to the core. What have I become? I try and speak, but have lost my voice. I feel helpless, trapped inside my own mind. Am I going mad? I buck again. That's pretty. Marion, at least, looks woeful, looks woeful yet supportive. I stand motionless in my new deer form until Marion comes face to face with me, cradling my new jaw and looking me in the eyes. I'm sorry, Malcolm. You have to stay away. Stop asking why. Which for you'll no get past ye. Girl's faces are frozen in my mind as I am jolted out of the nightmare. I wake up on the ground, trembling, covered in cold night sweat. My head aches from where it impacted the floor. My hands shake as I reach for my head, relieved to find that my skull is intact and there are no antlers or hooves. Marion's words form the dream reverb from the dream reverberates in my mind. Which for you'll need blah. 
Wits for you'll no get past. Wits for you'll no get past ye. It means whatever is meant to happen to you will happen to you. We heard it many times from Miss Alana before any of us received punishment for misbehaving. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Never question the teacher. Got a lot to blur in this episode. <laughs> okay, now it's nighttime. I mean, now it's daytime. I can't get back to sleep no matter how many times I roll over. Instead, I wake early and scrub my body over and over, trying to scour away the memory of the nightmare. More bristles tear away the entire top layer of my skin, and the burning sensation feels like a rebirth. Only after a third rinse of my face do I dare head back inside. I keep pinching my leg to assure my brain that I am awake and not still trapped in dreamland. In the living area, Grand stands at the stove, and I revisit the dream. Malcolm, good morning. Did you sleep well? Uh, no, actually, Gran, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Nightmares. I'm afraid so. Gran sets tea and sugar down at the table, sits across from me, and takes my hand into hers. Malcolm, the worst is over. Don't let your heavy heart weigh you down. If I'd let that happen, I'd have left this earth right after your granddad. But there's still too much, for, but there's still much to live for. Gran, I appreciate hearing that. Even if it's not what you want, it's what you get, and you'll learn to want it. Thank you, I... What is it? I have a funny question. Go ahead. Probably nothing stranger than I've heard on a Sunday morning in the pews. Well then, I decide to be blunt. Have you heard any strange rumors about the McLeod family? Anything that would make you stay away? Gran doesn't even blink. Never! Really? Listen, my boy, I'll be clear with you. A few people were fussing about when the girl's mother passed away years back. They had heard Owen may have taken a liking to another woman in town. I couldn't tell you who, and perhaps was not the most doting father to those lovely young women. But no, no doubt... No doubts have I ever raised about the kindness of that family. A relief washes over me, cleansing me stronger than any soap or bristles would, could. Grand's assurance has that power. And it makes me happy to hear. Why in the world would you ask me that? Just idle chatter, Grand. You know those rumor mills. They never stop churning. I eat quickly, barely chewing my eggs, bid my grandmother a good day and get to work. Atop the stable roof, the air, sun, and bracing wind cleanse my spirit. <sighs> this beautiful area. The, mm, excuse me. the sun winds through the sky as I diligently patch the holes one by one and lose myself to the blessed haze of simple manual labor. By noon, I have to remind myself to take a break. I don't want a repeat of yesterday's marathon triggering another night of frightful sleep. Stepping cautiously down from the roof, I take one ladder rung at a time. Then I address my options for the afternoon, fully aware that every decision I make in my life is now completely up to me. Or three. Yep, let's do it! Let's get drunk with the wolf girl. After waking, with my after waking with such a strange pit in my stomach, I found that the day's work has done little to dissolve it. Perhaps what I really need is some hair of the dog. After some coaxing, Hazel and I take off down the road toward the town in the cozy confines of the stag and nanny. There you are, young fella. Well, Gator spots me even before my eyes have adjusted. Aye, here I am, Bulgar. How are you? Tis a good day to be alive, Malcolm. The sun is shining, the midges still slumber, and the great outdoors beckon. Would that I didn't have to spend all day, every day here. Or so it feels, on days like today. What brings you to my dim-lit din? All oh, the beer you can drink. 
Well, naturally. That in the whiskey will keep a man happily chugging along right until his day in the dirt. In need of a libation, how are you holding up? I'm good. It's been rough, not gonna lie. Well, Gerda fills a pint glass and slides it across the bar as I take a stool. And that's where I'm gonna pause it right there, ladies and gents. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a rather raunchy episode of Changeling Tale. I almost forgot what I was playing. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!